This week is National Poison Prevention Week. The White House says more than 2 million poisoning cases are reported in the U.S. each year. An estimated 75,000 children under the age of 5 end up in the ER. And here to talk to us about some ways to keep your kids and pets safe is Dr. Sarah Kleiss. She's the Director of Pediatric Emergency Medicine at the Grand Strand Medical Center. Thank you for being here. I really appreciate it. And I love that you brought examples. All of these things, they look so bright and so beautiful and honestly tasty. I can see how they would end up in the mouths of, of little ones or furry mouths. We have two things right here. Yeah, so I can hardly tell which is candy. So definitely when you just look at some of these things across the table, these are things that we all carry in our house almost every single day. And they can definitely be, um, you know, construed as something that's totally edible. Sometimes they even smell good, look good, and can definitely be thought of as maybe food or a tasty treat for anyone. If we can take a look at these right here, one of these are lemon flavored candy. Mm -hmm. And one of these are what garbage disposal cleaner. Correct. Yeah, and take a look without even really knowing what's in either of those. A lot of us would probably not be able to necessarily guess. Um, so you can imagine how tricky that would be for a kid who doesn't know exactly what is or isn't they shouldn't be eating. Yes, yes. And so I know it's really cute and trendy to put all of these things in these types of clear containers but it makes it harder to be able to tell what should be eaten and what shouldn't, right? 100%. Because we have here, what do we have in these jars right here? These look very similar, but also delicious. So we have some kind of detergent packets, and then these are just some gummy candies, which again, the colors, the kind of texturing even is extremely similar. Do you see, I mean, we've, we've heard about the pods before, but do you see kids coming into the ER having eaten detergent pods? Unfortunately, yes, it does happen quite frequently, more than when we would definitely like, and we don't want it to happen to anyone, but it, kids do things on a dare sometimes even, or to try and to get a new experience, and that's not necessarily what we wanna see. So we have to be very careful about where we keep these and how we keep them locked up. And where would you say that we should keep them locked up? I mean, I'm sure, out of reach, but what about out of out of sight? <laughs> yes, 100%, so I agree with both of those. So definitely up high, places where little wandering hands and feet cannot get into easily, and then kind of out of reach, out of sight. The more those things are kept out of sight, the more they're gonna be out of mind for kids to kind of wanna play with. Definitely. Okay, and so we do have some a couple more things here. These are laundry scented beads, right? And mm -hmm. candy. Candy, yep. Um, also similar to some of these are some of the more fizzy candies that kids can either pop in right into their yes. mouth or into drinks. They look exactly like this, so really? definitely be careful. And then these are just a you know, common candy that a lot of kids are kind of getting into. Yes, and then this is terrifying right here. <laughs> what do we have in these two containers? Um, so you definitely have one of them that is a drink and one of them that is a detergent uh, for and the sink. And we took off the labels here, but Imagine if you couldn't read. Yeah. <laughs> so if you're a little one and you can't read and all you see is a bright blue, I mean, this looks very thirst quenching. Yeah, I can say it definitely looks like a juice that you could grab in the fridge. What about medicines and other various like hygiene products? Right, so a lot of these things are on the market today and they're gummies and gummies are a great way to get vitamins in for your kids. But unfortunately, some of these things can have dose dependent um, concerns. And so, you know, these, you might allow your kid to have a whole packet of these, but you wouldn't want your kid to have a whole packet of this because this could lead to some troubles and can unfortunately lead to a trip to the ER that you might not necessarily Okay, need. so eating too many gummy vitamins is something to keep an eye on mm -hmm. because if they eat one, they are, they're delicious. Mm -hmm. I mean, I have to admit it, they're delicious. What about purses or travel bags? You know, when you're traveling and you just kind of throw things in an easily accessible bag, maybe makeup yep. or things of that nature, right? Yeah, so it's important to remember that those personal hygiene um, products can also be important to kind of keep away from those prying fingers and eyes. So definitely even having, sometimes having a little ba you know, baggage lock on some of those areas can definitely keep your kids safe. Things like deodorant, toothpaste, nail polish, things that you don't necessarily even think of can be very s smelly and tasty and very concerning thing that they could get into. Is there anything else that parents need to be aware of that maybe kids are allowed to have, but maybe in large quantities would be dangerous? Yeah, so unfortunately, even some of the toys that we have in our environment for kids, although they're labeled as non-toxic, does not necessarily mean that's safe to play with all the time and do, do require some supervision. So one great example of this is something called water beads. Um, these are a very popular toy that recently came out that kids love to play with. Um, they're labeled as non-toxic, but the concern here is actually if they are ingested. So these 
these are dehydrated water beads. There's about 2,000 of these beads in here. So you can imagine that if a child were to ingest these and then they expand in their stomach to something that is like this or even larger, that this can lead to major problems such as intestinal blockages or other complications. They look like candy. They look like jelly beans. And if you, and if you were to feel them, I mean, yeah. they feel, and they're supposed to be sensory play. Correct. So they're, they're going to say they've been kind of shown to really help kids with that sensory experience. But the problem is, again, if you ingest one of these, it can go into your airway, it can go into your GI tract, and unfortunately, they can continue to expand in places that they're not supposed to, which can really lead to those complications. So those kind of beads, even though they're fun and they're labeled as non-toxic, they can still cause major problems if they are ingested. And so I would definitely um, you know, tell parents that they really need to supervise their children with these and really be careful about any young ones or even pets on the floor who could get these into their mouths. Okay, and so then something like that probably would be an instant trip to the ER? Yes. If you find out your child is... I can say you definitely would want to inform your medical provider and then even go into the ER if needed. Before we even left the hospital with my son, the first thing the doctor said was, here is the poison control number, put it in your cell phone. Is that something that you recommend for parents? A hundred percent. I definitely recommend that all the parents I see, especially when they come in after some type of ingestion, we make sure that they have that number. Um, and even I really encourage parents to have that number just available. Sometimes that can even help prevent you from coming into the ER if you have to. Um, so just having that number available and around is a great thing to have. Hey, some excellent tips, Dr. Sarah Kleist. Thank you so much for being here. Here. And again, that number for the National Poison Control Center is 1-800-222-1222. It's available 24 hours a day, every day.